Good morning, all. Okay, so I want to go over a couple more examples of using the graphing calculator to graph quadratic equations. Um, but the difference between the last lesson and today is that we're going to start graphing some quadratic equations that are a little more difficult. You guys know that I always start out simple, and what do I always say to you guys? It's going to get harder, right? Well, this is where we get a little harder, but I know you guys can do it. Okay, so today we're going to do two examples. The first example is this one right here. Graph y equals negative x squared plus 2x plus 3. Now remember that we can use the graphing calculator to make it really easy to fill in our table of numbers. So how do we do that? Well, just like last lesson, I'm going to press y equals, and it'll bring up a screen that looks something like this, okay? Then I'm just going to enter my equation. So I'm, I pressed the negative button to give me a negative. Then I need to press the x, t, theta, n button to give me a variable x. Then I'm going to square that. Now I'm going to type plus 2 x, t, theta n to give me another x plus 3. Now I have put my equation into the graphing calculator. Now if I press the graph button, it will show me a picture of what I can expect. Okay, now if I press second and then graph again, it'll give me a table. Now I want to see the numbers 3 through negative 3. So I'm going to press the up button until I get these numbers. Now I can see here that when th uh, x equals 3, y equals 0. And when x equals 2, y equals 3. Now I want to point out, I'm looking in these columns. Here's the x column and the y column. So right now I'm looking for when x equals 1. Well, if I look down here, x is 1, y is 4. Now, when x equals 0, y equals 3. When x equals negative 1, I get a 0. When x equals negative 2, I get a negative 5. And when x equals negative 3, I get a negative 12. Now you can see here that my pattern exists. It's there. I have a 0, 3, 4, 3, 0. But then I have these two outliers, and that is because I didn't include 4 and 5. If I did include 4 and 5, you would see that, let's just write it down here. If I included x equals 4, and I look in the calculator, I'm going to have to go down a little bit. So there's 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. When x equals 4, y equals negative 5. Okay? So what I'm going to do, you know what? I'm going to erase this, and I'm going to put it at the top so it's easier to understand. So if I had 4, this would be negative 5. Do you see the pattern again? So I have negative 5, 0, 3, 4, 3, 0, negative 5. Okay, so... Now that I have looked at the table, figured out my values, I'm going to graph the coordinates. So for negative 5, I'm going to go over 4 and down 5. For 3, 0, I'm going to go over 3 and stay on the x-axis because y equals 0. For 2, 3, I'm going to go over 2 and up 3. For 1, 4, I'm going to go over 1 and up 4. For 0, 3, I'm going to stay at the origin and go up 3. For negative 1, 0, I'm going to go to the left 1 and stay on the x-axis. For negative 2, 5, I'm going to go over to the negative 2 and down to the negative 5. So there's my points. Now all I have to do is draw the line as best I can to fit 
those points. Now, if I go back into my graphing calculator and just click the graph button, you can see that the parabola inside the calculator looks very similar to the parabola that I have on the piece of graph paper. So let's answer some questions about this parabola. What are the roots of this quadratic? So I'm going to show you the two different ways we figure this out. The roots of the quadratic are going to be the x values when the y is 0. So you can see here that the y is 0 here and the y is 0 there. So I'm going to write x equals 3 and x equals negative 1. And if you look here, here's my 3, here's my negative 1. Now if you want to look at the graph, you can do that. The graph will very clearly show you where your roots are. So remember, the roots are where the parabola crosses the x-axis. So that means right here and right here. And if you look at those points, this point is where x equals 3. And this point is where x equals negative 1. So these two numbers are my roots or zeros of the equation. The next question, does this quadratic have a maximum or a minimum? So, because my parabola looks like a mountain, that means that I have a maximum. And the maximum is where y equals 4. You can see here that there is the number 4. So, I have a maximum. at y equals 4. Okay, what is the axis of symmetry for this equation? Well, if you remember, there is an equation. It's x equals negative b over 2a. Now I'm going to look at my quadratic formula, or my uh, equation up here. It's negative x squared plus 2x plus 3. So I'm going to copy that down negative x squared plus 2x plus 3. I'm just going to double check that I got that right. Beautiful. Okay, so this tells me that this number would be my a, this number is my b, and this number is my c. You can see that there's an invisible 1 in front of the negative x squared. Well, excuse me, the, the invisible one's in front of the x squared, but it's affected by the negative. So my a is negative 1, as you can see right here. My b is just 2, as you can see right here. And my c is 3, as you can see right here. So subbing these numbers into that equation, I get x equals negative 2, because 2 is my b, and I have to have this negative, over 2 times, and my a is negative 1. So this tells me that x equals negative 2 divided by 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. x a negative over a negative is a positive, and 2 divided by 2 is 1. So there is the equation for my axis of symmetry. Well, let's take a look at the graph and see what that looks like. So where does x equal 1? Oh, excuse me. Where does x equal 1? So x doesn't equal 1 over here. That's a 7. x doesn't equal 1 over here. That's a 4. But x does equal 1 right there. So my axis of symmetry has to go through that point. And as you can see, it goes through the maximum all the way down to the bottom of the graph. And this is x equals 1. That is my axis of symmetry. Remember, symmetry means that a line can cut a figure in half such that the two parts that it 
cuts into that it the two parts that are uh, cut are equal to each other. Okay, guys, so that's it for today. Remember that there will be a bell ringer and a homework assignment with this lesson. And as always, please stay safe.